everybody. Salam alaikum. It's really great to have you all here. It's our Passover and let um, Charlie and Hisham introduce themselves and I'm sure you're going to really enjoy this webinar. <laughs> Masala uh, here. It's me, Charlie. At a man and a corner, Jamie and Bichia. I want my haban become finad but al yom. One not a man and and a corner, Mufidata Lakum. So I've been very fortunate to have um, have lived in the Middle East for oh about 19 years now. And like many who've been in the region for for some time, we've um, we've seen um, a, a, a real change in, in the region, and the same can be, and the same can be also um, applied to life here at Bizak. Um, I witnessed a, a huge change in, in the perception of Arabic. So before I begin, uh, let me clarify that my experiences lie with the management uh, for the teaching and learning of Arabic for non-natives. Um, however, I do remain. Sadly, I think in Shem said Mukchil that my Arabic uh, speaking skills are nowhere near uh, where they should be. May also say uh, as a disclaimer that we are not the best department in the world. We are we, we are we are nowhere near uh, near finished yet. Um, there are also many schools uh, in the region where the teaching of, of Arabic is a huge success and where it's truly really been embedded into the school and the wider community. So let's. Um, first of all, remind ourselves, I guess, of, of, of where we are. So um, Arabic is, as we know, one of the world's great powerhouse languages, uh, spoken by more than 400 million people. Uh, globally, it's been the vehicle of many contributions to the development of science and culture and philosophy, uh, to the mathematicians of Islam's golden age, to the novels of Najib Mahfouz. Uh, it's also one of the official UN languages and one of the top five languages identified um, by the UK for its business future. But here's a question for you. How many people know all this? How many students in our classes actually know all this? And it leads us, I think, quite neatly into our first objective of this webinar. And the, the key takeaway, the key theme from this is about perception. So what perceptions exist in your school? Now, our list is not exhaustive, but it's important for me to say, emphasize that this is what we've seen at BZAC at our school. And the first one is um, lack of engagement in um, Arabic lessons. Um, are they perceived as, I don't know, not being as exciting or stimulating as other lessons do students and parents in your school compare and contrast the Arabic learning experience with other subjects, for example. When it comes to behaviour, um, it may be an issue in, uh, in, your, uh, in your school. And it was in our school for, you know, for a number of years, unfortunately. This um, lack of respect for the subjects and maybe the teacher is undoubtedly uh, the root cause um, of this. But then do Arabic colleagues recognize and do they cater for different learning needs? Do they support these students appropriately? And does this lack of support perhaps lead to issues in class? In terms of the Arabic teacher's role in the wider school community, what role do you play in your school delegates? Are you able to lead school trips? Do you take part and even maybe the lead CBD sessions? Do you have a pastoral role in your school? Does your school have a house system? And do you get involved in this? And I think my overriding question on this uh, bullet point is how visible are you in your school? So we asked ourselves the question some years back about why these perceptions exist and what can we do about them? Now, I, I apologize. I don't know where your school is uh, in terms of uh, Arabic and as a whole school priority right now. So I'll talk about what we've done and what we experienced. And I think that if you genuinely want Arabic to succeed in your school, you must have a robust, um, deep review of, of where you are right now and where you are where you are at a school. But this audit of Arabic, it has to be across 
all of your school stakeholders. And by that, I mean the governing body, your senior team, um, staff, parents, uh, and students. So how important do you think that, um, that Arabic is to your governance, to your senior team, for example? Now, for us to bring Arabic under the MFL umbrella, we had to have the support of the senior team, and they've got a major role to play, let's face it, in challenging and removing these perceptions. But this took us two to three years. Um, I'm not sure about your school, but how do other staff members in your school perceive their Arabic colleagues, perceive the Arabic subject? And I do believe that some of these perceptions need challenging in order for us to avoid a kind of uh, a culture that can become almost us and them. And the same, I guess, also of, of, of parents. And, and I believe, and you may agree with me or, or not agree, uh, that there's a mindset among some parents, not many, but a few, that the Arabic language is somehow not as important. It doesn't have the same value because English is the lingua franca of the global business. But I think what we did was to keep preaching the message that the Arabic language and culture is of immense global uh, value. And I, I kind of find it hard to understand why you wouldn't want to live and breathe um, you know, the culture, the language of this, of this amazing region. I think it was Nelson Mandela who said, um, if you talk to a man in his language, he understands, that goes to his, his head. If you talk to him in his own language, that goes to his heart. So finally, in terms of, of the, the student's perception of Arabic, Let's face it, these can be the most brutally honest of all. And I think it's here where you need to drill down into how we can make things in better in the Arabic classroom. So in the year before we took Arabic under the MFL umbrella, I spent many hours meeting students to get their opinion uh, on Arabic teaching, Arabic teachers, uh, Arabic curriculum. And it's a pretty raw and emotional process. Um, the best judge, let's face it, of how good your lessons are is not through inspection, it is ultimately, isn't it, through the students. So to end this takeaway, to end this uh, section, sorry, there are three main takeaways uh, for you. And that is, what's the perception of Arabic in your school across all of your stakeholders? What challenges are you currently facing? And what can you do to address these challenges? OK, on to my uh, second um, strand. So um, identifying practical ways to deliver objectives to help raise standards. So for, for MFL and Arabic here at BZAC, once we had made this move to bring Arabic uh, non-native course B, if you wish, uh, under languages, it was time to get to work on the classroom environment. And one of the issues that we identified with those who are trained in, in the uh, GCC in the MENA region, which is also um, Hisham's view, is that there can be a lot of theory on these teacher training courses, maybe too much on some. So the development and the growth we've witnessed in this school have been <coughs> enabled by bringing UK experience and pedagogy uh, into the Arabic classrooms. In essence, as MFL teachers, uh, we are running our very own in-house, hands-on, coffee break, uh, you know, PGC programme. We share best practice, as we all do. We have peer observations and we carry out learning walks. And we also have an open door policy as well that, that, that I think is very, very beneficial. Now, in, in school, and I'm sure the same in your schools, reflection um, is embedded into our, into our practice. But I think that reflection only really works if there's a culture of openness uh, in your school or department. So by no longer working in isolation, our Arabic staff, I think now, feel more confident 
to discuss how they can be better and also you know, how how they feel. Um, and I think it's really important also to emphasize that it should be an acceptance that you make mistakes, you know, in, in learning. But by being in the same department uh, as MFL colleagues and being in the same office and, and sharing lots of time together, those conversations we've had over the last um, six years now have created nuggets of information. <laughs> When it comes to um, feedback, I think it takes a really brave person to stop a class and to say, right guys, this isn't working. Uh, what can I do as a teacher to make it better? What can I do to explain myself more clearly? And this is what I've, I've almost done as a teacher myself. And we try to instill um, this kind of approach to in our, in our Arabic colleagues, that having an awareness and an understanding of how students learn is essential. This takes time, as I've said, and it's all about changing those mindsets and not being afraid to change, to change what you do and listen to other people. When it comes to professional goals, to, to CPD, um, we want our Arabic staff to grow. Uh, as much as we want to have a stable um, department, we also owe it to our colleagues to help them to grow professionally. And at some point, they may wish to move on. Ishan, please don't, obviously. Um, I think we have staff now uh, who are now uh, ready to make that next move. And our in-house BSAC CBD program allows us to do this but we don't always insist that the goals that they set should be necessarily Arabic language based. As I mentioned, we want staff to play uh, a, a greater role in the wider school community. And these goals for some have actually focused on the pastoral side. And I think that by doing that, it takes that member of staff into a different part of the school and therefore exposed to, to colleagues who aren't linguists, who've got different ideas. And of course, this also creates uh, integration. When it comes to collaboration, um, raising the profile of Arabic in uh, BSAC as a language has happened organically. It's not happened overnight, okay, over a weekend. But the reason why it's happened is because of the staff that we have who go regularly go above and beyond. Um, but we don't want this limited to, to our school. So, you know, if there's best practice to be, to be shared, then let's do so across the community. Uh, I'm not sure if you talk to other schools in your region, in your area, uh, but it's definitely for us uh, been a worthwhile exercise. We've run cross city sessions. I know that Hisham talks to his Arabic colleagues other schools regularly. So if the schools in Abu Dhabi out there on this webinar, I hope you well, let's meet up. Let's go and grab a kahwa and let's start talking in you know, Arabic teaching. So the main takeaways from this uh, section for me are what does reflection look like in your department? How open to feedback uh, are you? And how would you describe the level of engagement in professional learning uh, in among your staff. So I come now to the, 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 the final part of, of, uh, of my um, part of the webinar, and that is, I guess, it's the, the final strand. It's my chance to show you where we are now. Uh, we're on a journey that has been, I think, fairly rocky. It's been fairly uh, challenging, but ultimately it's been a really fruitful one. And I genuinely feel that having spent time with, uh, let me think, Egyptian, Iraqi, Syrian, Omani, Jordanian, Libyan and Lebanese colleagues, that I'm a better and wiser person for that. And if so, one hopes the same for our students, of course. So our Arabic staff are more engaged. And I think by engagement, you can also read enthusiasm, you can read passion, you can read commitment. And it's been helped for sure by continuity, supported by investing in our Arabic staff in terms of um, salaries, in terms of benefits, 
Um, and this means we finally have now a settle of departments and we can allow those staff to grow together. But we also are confident that new members of staff will fit in to our ethos and buy into our new culture and our new vision. In terms of the, the students increase uh, in motivation, look, I don't believe for one minute that we are at the end of the Arabic learning rainbow. Uh, but I do know that we've seen a shift in the attitude of students in terms of their Arabic learning experiences. This evidence comes from learning walks, from parental feedback, and I think just a general positive vibe in departments. Um, I don't think we've created yet a community of bilingual Arabophiles, uh, and there still persists for us a tiny element of disaffection. But I do believe that the value of Arabic in this school has certainly increased. So we believe that, that starting Arabic in, for us in FS1, and maybe as far back as nursery for some students, and, however early you start your education Arabic in your school. It has to be starting so early, some, some degree, some concrete outcome, something tangible, a certificate, something, a reward, whatever it might be. So last year was our third year of entries uh, for the Pearson LXL Arabic GCSE. And we are very proud, we're very boastful, to say that of all those non-native expatriate kids who took the exam last year passed, and many in the higher tier. And this may already be in place in your school, and if it is, it's a fantastic move. But if not, the end of your Arabic learning journey, what do you reward uh, your students with? So behavior management, and this goes back, I think, to the first slide, one of the first points I made. And we know that teaching is not a perfect world and we still face pockets of low level behavior. But what we've done is we've challenged those behaviors by ensuring that classroom expectations are instilled and are met. And of course, this, this works two ways. So we've, had a, we've created a habit, a culture of student observations. And by this, I mean, we asked our Arabic uh, teachers for whom some kids were a challenge in their class to go and observe them in other parts of the school. How are they in maths? How are they in science? What does the French teacher do that motivates, engages some kids that maybe you could or maybe you don't do? This is as much uh, observation of, of their behaviour as it is one of, of the techniques that other colleagues use. It's also, of course, about self-reflection. So Arabic in the school community. I mentioned earlier the currency <coughs> of Arabic in school has increased. This should not, this cannot be confined to a particular national day, international day, um, whatever you celebrate in your school. We want the Arabic language and the culture of this uh, wider region to be spread far and wide. We host our very own European Evening of Culture here. And in, in recent times, we celebrated the, the links between French, Spanish and Arabic. I would never, ever have imagined an Arabic colleague, um, Mr. Sultan, on stage singing Khalid Selavi in French with a bunch of 50 year sevens a few years ago. We now have Arabic teachers as house captains, as form tutors, people who lead CPD, who talk at conferences. I know there are many schools who do this already, okay, and we're not unique, but it's part, I guess, evidence of the journey that we've been on, that we can now trust and have faith in our staff to take on responsibility, to lead and inspire students and to also lead and inspire other colleagues. In terms of Arabic in, in the wider school, you know, Abu Dhabi community here, we want to spread the word to share what we do. It's why we're here now, of course, on this webinar. 
And so a few years back, we hosted a rather ambitious two day conference uh, for schools in the region, one day MFL and one day Arabic. And we plan to run the same thing again this autumn, but for Arabic A and Arabic B only. Um, and this was the endorsement of the sort of first two, three years of our of our journey, of our hard work together. And having members of the Arabic team running workshops to packed classrooms with delegates from all over the, the wider region was something I couldn't have envisaged, I think, a few years ago. And the impact of these events is, is, is huge. So before I, before I um, pass on to the, the star of the show, my amazing colleague Hisham, I want to, I think, conclude with just one final takeaway, which is whether or not you are able to merge uh, Arabic under your language departments or, or not, the main objective is that, and this is me speaking from experience here, obviously, is that if you really value the Arabic language, if you really value, and I know you do, Arabic culture, and if you commit to, to a process, and it does take time, and there are setbacks, I think the rewards are infinite. I think, and I believe you'll be a better department for it. And also, uh, you will see the profile of Arabic grow in your school. And of course, none of this, I can speak for hours about what we've done, but none of this, none of this trend that we've been on the last six years is possible without the support of genuinely amazing people like Hisham, who, who, will now, who will now talk to you about what we've done in classroom in terms of practicalities and how we've, we've embedded these practices into our Arabic classrooms. Thanks guys, and I'll see you in the webinar for a Q&A. Okay, shukran Charlie. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ma'akum Hisham Abdel Latif. رئيس قسم اللغة العربية في مدرسة القبيرات البريطانية في أبو ظبي يسعدني أن أكون معكم اليوم إن شاء الله في هذه الندوة لأشارك بعضا من الممارسات الجيدة وأنماط التعلم والتدريس وبعض الاستراتيجيات التي نستخدمها في فصولنا لتدريس اللغة العربية لناطقين بغيرها وأتمنى إن شاء الله أن تكون مفيدة لكم بإذن الله طبعا أهدفنا اليوم أن أهدفنا اليوم أن نبين لحضراتكم أهمية تعزيز تدريس اللغة العربية في أقسام اللغات الأجنبية وأن نلقي نظرة حول تأثير هذه التغييرات على تعلم الطلاب ومشاركتهم بالإضافة إلى مشاركة أفضل الممارسات في تدريس في الممارسات لتعزيز تدريس اللغة العربية في أقسام اللغات الأجنبية الحديثة. طبعا لنبدأ من خلال إبراز أهمية تعزيز تدريس اللغة العربية بأقسام اللغات الأجنبية الحديثة. قبل ست سنوات أو مقارنة بدخولنا مع الـ MFL، قبل ست سنوات اعتاد معلم اللغة العربية للناطقين بغيرها في مدرسة القبيرات على استخدام الطرق التقليدية في التعليم والتعلم، وتعتمد أكثر على أوراق العمل واستخدام المواد الجافة. وأيضا كان كل معلم يخطط لجميع المناهج بشكل منفصل هذا أدى إلى تدني جودة تخطيط الدرس بسبب الضغط العالي على المعلم وهذا بدوره أدى إلى تدني جودة التدريس وقلة مشاركة الطلاب مما نتج عنه المزيد من المشكلات السلوكية والمزيد من شكاوى أولياء الأمور وتدريجيا طبعا بالعمل مع فريق قسم اللغات الأجنبية الحديثة في MFL بدأنا أن ندرك أهمية تطوير ومراجعة الاستراتيجيات الاستراتيجيات المدرسة حول تعليم اللغة العربية وتهيئة البيئة الإيجابية للتعلم وبدأنا أيضا في تحديد وتخطيط ومشاركة الاستراتيجيات والجداول الزمنية المناسبة لتحقيق الأهداف المهنية وبدأنا أيضا في تصنيف الطلاب وفقا لمستوياتهم إلى ثلاثة مستويات فلدينا في مدرسة الخبيرات فصول تضم الطلاب المتفوقين وأخرى المتوسطين وفصول للمبتدئين طبعا هذا التصنيف يأتي بناء على, على نتائج العام المنصرم وعلى الاختبارات التشخيصية للعام الجديد 
بالإضافة إلى أراء المعلمين الذين كانوا يدرسون الطلاب في المرحلة السابقة. أحيانا نستخدم سوات تكنيك هذا بالإضافة إلى استخدام بعض الاستراتيجيات أو السيرفي الاستبانات والهدف من هذا توضيح نقاط القوة أو أن نتعرف على من الطالب على نقاط القوة ونقاط الضعف والفرص التي يريدها أو يتمنها طالب من المعلم أن تتاح له وأيضا الثريتس أو العقبات التي تواجه الطالب فهناك سوات تمبلت في هذا التمبلت هذا يقوم أو نشجع الطلاب على أن يكتبوا نقاط القوة ونقاط الضعف وما يريدونه من المعلم وأيضا ما هي الصعوبات التي يمكن أن تواجههم وأيضا يقوم كل طالب بوضع بعض النقاط أو الأهداف الذكية what we call in English smart goals طبعا after identifying the needs and requirements of these of our students so planning comes easy for uh, or, uh, or, uh, or being aware of the of uh, of the teacher's responsibilities so each each teacher now is responsible for planning one or two syllabuses instead of all the syllabuses as before this makes the load of the teacher less and the quality of the planning high and at the same time uh, lesson plans became differentiated and we used to put our lesson plans on Google Drive and we share it on Google Classroom. So this creates a collaborative work and each teacher adapt these lesson plans according to his teaching styles. طبعا أنا نشجع الطلاب على وضع الأهداف الذكية لأن طبعا أنا as you know having a clear goal you make students focus for example if they know what is their target or their goal which they are achieving so they will be more focused more motivated and also this develop new strategies to meet the goals and uh, let students monitor how well they are doing yeah smart goals uh, uh, to these goals should be specific measurable achievable uh, and uh, realistic uh, and time bounded I'm going to just give example to show that, for example, I or a student cannot say uh, to improve in Arabic. This is not a smart goal. He can say to improve uh, or to move uh, from uh, in reading skill from grade five to grade six by the end of term one. So this smart goal is specific, which is just to move from grade five to grade six. And it's measurable. So it, he, if he achieved by end of term one, the grade six, so he achieved it. So achievable because it's uh, not difficult and also need, not easy and realistic because he didn't say I need to move from grade five to grade nine. And it's, uh, as I told, uh, time bounded because it will be uh, or it, it is detected by a time. Uh, so uh, classifying uh, or learning and teaching styles. So uh, having a clear picture, all of these data or of this data give a teacher a clear picture uh, uh, about the requirement and needs of the students. So, and this is the first step for success. As you know that the students, some students like visual, some of them are audio. Some students like learning by doing, with learning by playing, for example. That's why the teacher can adapt his teaching styles according to the learning styles of the students. And uh, uh, having or being aware of the teaching uh, styles, this also can, uh, as Charlie said, can solve the problems, which uh, uh, is mentioned by Charlie in the beginning of the webinar. This means that when a teacher chooses a suitable learning and teaching styles, this can lead definitely to more engagement in Arabic lessons, good students' behavior, high class management in Arabic lessons, and also confidence or high confidence and progress in students' attainment. And these are some of, <coughs> some of the examples uh, which are about uh, from our classes about the, the different learning styles used by our students. Some students like 
Chrome, a tongue resin, a tongue built technology. Each student in, in BSAC has a Chromebook, which uh, makes uh, him, uh, we use technology, and also uh, some students like creating mind map, abstracted Zahniya, spider gram, or anything. Some students like solving problems. And here, uh, if you look, look at this student, you can find that he is doing many skills here. He can say, use, he is a beginner student. He is using this chapter to find, uh, to create or to find the word and read the sentence and try to translate it using word list, for example. Some students like using the QR code, writing also from memory, which is uh, very useful for uh, writing a skill. Also, some students are visual and audio or kinesthetic. Uh, this, if you look at word search here, some students can create word search and uh, the other student can search for the word uh, which is created by his partner, for example. Some students like acting uh, plays uh, or using puppets, okay? And also some students use calligraphy uh, and uh, some students use, for example, this is Language not, which is amazing platform, and I'm going to show it in detail in the, uh, during uh, this webinar. Uh, using uh, electronic games, some students like illustrations of creating, especially beginner students here. They can draw pictures and label them. They can create short sentences, write words, making also projects, and also using digitals. If we look at here. This is a use also of whiteboard, which is very important. I can show a student a sentence. They can, and it will disappear after 30 seconds, for example, and they can write it and show it to me as a teacher. If I find a student did a mistake, I can show the sentence again. I ask the students to give them feedback and to compare their sentence, which they write, and the sentence on the board. Some students like uh, uh, chatter box and also some students may play by using music and some students like rap songs and playing games. I will explain uh, this. Uh, this is uh, okay. So I can show uh, a video. Okay. So these students also are GCC and ministry classes. So here we can see uh, some uh, ministry classes doing a conversation. I can show you here, for example. Okay, here we observe that these two students prepared together to create a conversation and he is interviewing, okay, and he is asking questions and uh, uh, discussing or uh, the question about media. If we look here also for GCC students, we can find uh, students uh, prepare together a role play and also they do a scenario exactly like GCSE, which I'm going to explain also in the section of GCSE also. Let's uh, see. Okay, this role play Okay, we observe here that these two students were bear the role play, and uh, this boy is reading because he is a teacher, and this student is doing or is answering without it, and they will do the opposite now. So this will be a teacher, and he will be uh, a student. So they are practicing exactly as the in the, uh, or the GCSE exam. If we look at this photocard also, 
and I will just have one tool for to display it on. This is a photo card. Okay, here in this photo card we can find that uh, this student is asking about the photo card and uh, as teachers, how can we uh, empower our students? Okay, for example, here I can show you quickly and then I will complete in the GCSE section. Here, for example, in the speaking part, this is additional in uh, GCSE library for year 10. So we create uh, the vocab which are related to the exam, past papers also which uh, students use and also writing the resources. If you, we look at the speaking resources here, the students, uh, have, we empower students of how role play goes and also how photo card. Let's look at the photo card. This is additional work we give the students. This, uh, this uh, video, I explain all the process of the photo card to make students work at home also as additional because you know most of students are non-Arab and they don't or their parents don't know Arabic. So we make this these links to help them. So this is the criteria of the photo card. They should be aware every student. So how is photo card uh, goes? And, uh, and this is the photo card of the teacher. We show it to student to know how is it going. And this is a photo card of a, a student, or this is a teacher or this is a student. So students uh, know and compare how the teacher's photo card is. And, and uh, also we empower students here with the questions and we give them some key phrases and the key sentences to enable them to build on their uh, work uh, and the sentences. If we look at here also, this is a conversation in our or of uh, uh, GCC also. Uh, how can we reach this production by planning? I will show you how we plan our lessons and also I will show some of the videos which uh, show the production of the. These are the the. These are the lessons which we, or the books which we lose in our, use in our uh, planning. This book is used for beginner and pre-GCSE, uh, pre and this is for GCSE, and this book is ministry book. And we can make adaptation to these books to cope with the standards and the levels and the framework of the ministry. We put our work on Google Classroom and share it with on Google Drive and share it with Google Classroom. We also uh, relate our work to the UAE culture and also to the students' daily life. But look, how can this, this in our, in, in BSAC, we plan a progressive lessons. A step can lead to the next step. We can, uh, we can start from raising awareness to spontaneity and the fantastic production. And I will show you uh, uh, a practical example now on a recent topic which we did in our classes. In our planning, we follow the same, uh, the topic title, which uh, uh, student, for example, uh, in this topic, we are going to learn about the success criteria, what will work look like by the end of the topic. And uh, we move to the next step, which is raising and modeling the student's awareness. And uh, after that, we can move to the receptive skills. The receptive skills uh, to enable students to have much input practice of the listening and the reading skills. And after that, after if we did these, these steps uh, successfully, we will have definitely a strong production in speaking and uh, writing. Let's uh, look at to have an example here. For example, I will talk about this is a recent topic which we uh, started uh, about daily, daily routine, Barnamaj Yomi. We put the objectives which uh, so students should be aware of the objectives and success criteria. These objectives are based on Bloom's taxonomy. So if we look, for example, in the beginning uh, of introducing the vocab, we do not make a word, just a word list. If you look at this word list, you will find it's very organized. And also there is a link here to support the students 
uh, it is virtual and audio in the same time. So students use their Chromebooks to listen and learn during the lesson. So as a teacher, uh, 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 our students will be able to create sentences easily and it is and they will be able to identify the parts of the speech for example here the possessive adjectives they will know that this is my yeah oh yeah and uh, this is present it start with a uh. so students should be or we can give these notes uh, to students while explaining so if students spend the time on the on the link the, uh, they we can ask uh, students also to uh, use language not we can uh, language not is as i told you a big platform it has uh, it has a section of vocab but if i want uh, for example vocab about daily routine i need only these words so i can or a plat uh, language platform which is amazing really gives me this advantage which uh, is to create language not content so i can create my content this is my content which i created and uh, it will be easy to use the same vocab and we have also another uh, platforms to use after uh, after that one of the good practices is to ask a student to use this word list to record sentences here for example so if i look the here we can see a student uh, we can see a student uh, we can uh, ask a student uh, to record and uh, here uh, on Google Classroom, they use Kami and uh, record and the teacher also gives them feed, uh, feedback uh, because the time of the lesson is not enough to uh, let all students say three sentences or four sentences. So you can ask a student and encourage them to listen to the word list and record. So everyone will be responsible on the work everyone will know that the teacher will listen and give him his uh, the, the feedback that's why they give the sentences also here this is one of the good practices which is to what number this is we are still raising the awareness about the same word list if you look at this word list it is exactly from the words from the word list not more or not other words you can add other words if they are studied before so for example I read, I read a sentence, كل يوم أذهب إلى النادي الساعة خمسة ونصف ظهرا. Which sentence? So a student will look and try to recognize the sentence. So he will say رقم أربعة. And after that also, we can, uh, I put a sentence now in my mind in this bracket. I put a sentence in my mind. Which sentence do you guess? So some of you said كل يوم أرتب سريري الساعة سادسة ونصف. I say no, it is not. لا. And another one will read. So by this way, for and in the end, I say, for example, كل يوم أستقر الساعة. Say this was the sentence in my mind. If we observe here, we put a number. Okay, we put numbers here because we need numbers. But we don't write numbers here because some students, if before we use this, some students say number one or number two. So, but the target of this is to force the students to read the sentences here. Also, another good practice here is that a sentence appears for seconds and the students try to read it fast. So this will try to um, mo uh, motivate them to read uh, quickly. And also this is a good game to ask a student called uh, crossing the river. It has a rule. So students, for example, are here and uh, there are some rules that, that they need to follow to cross the road, for example, the, the river, for example. For example, the, the, it has uh, rocks. So the first rock is they need to read this sentence. The second rock they need to read also. The third is they need to complete, read and complete. The third one is read and translate and so. So they have more breaks on the same, uh, on the word lists. And also there are a lot of activities like this. So this sentence, for example, appears to students for seconds. Uh, for uh, for and then it will disappear soon. Uh, then students will try to recognize how to write these sentences from memory. So this is a very good practice also. Uh, and these are instead of asking the student to translate the sentences directly, we can make this fun thing. So the my name is Sam. It's mentioned here. The second one and so on. So the, uh, read and draw and listen, and also using Google Form, which is very important. Also we can use it in listening and uh, reading. 
so it will give uh, us uh, uh, it will give me for example feedback when students submit this google form it will give me a uh, feedback to know how students are going and what is so as i showed you this is a student he discovered the sentence and he wrote it and translated so this is a very good also for beginners and also for intermediate students and using images it's very important to look ana adhabu ila albayt for example so he can use the same word list and do so this is also writing good writing practice to use and uh, and uh, uh, students should be aware, aware about the success criteria how many words and the links and the, how can so this they will be able to in reduce a good so also using the fluency uh, cards this is if we follow the five steps which i mentioned before and this is one of the recent topics which we taught so the production was the production this you can see one of the production after finishing uh, these steps uh, successfully so this student is presenting about the same about uh, so the student is using connective summa بعد ذلك and he is using confidently and with good pronunciation also if we look at uh, this long song for example this is created by uh, the whole class it was they created uh, daily routine So uh, students also not just the singing, they are also miming. So they know the meanings. And this is a rap song created by a beginner student on the, or some students also. This is also a translation. Uh, for example, students are doing a translation. Yeah, if we look at here, there is a differentiation here for this class. So students here are translating sentences and the other group is translating uh, is translating uh, also uh, nas or text. So you can look and the other students and two students are giving feedback to other students and the rest of the class is giving self assessment to themselves. الآن صحح لنفسك. Yeah. جميعا مع زيد وزرافور. زيد اقرأ بالعربية زرافور تران... ترجم مرحبا اسمي لوسي هلو ماي نيم از لوسي كل يوم استيقظ صباحا اوكي سو هير وي فايند ذا تو ستودنتس كيم كونفدنتلي تو دو ذا رايتنج اند اولسو ذيس از رايتنج يو ويل فايند ا فارييتي اوف اوف فيدباك سيلف اسسمنت بير اسسمنت تيشر اسسمنت هير ذا اوبجيكتيفز of uh, or uh, this objective is uh, is GCSE yeah this is uh, advice from the highest uh, as Charlie mentioned we had excellent results or, uh, and most of the students got uh, nine eight and nine this is the high the student who got the highest mark in the world last year he is giving advice Okay, one of the best uh, good advice uh, Ahmed gave is to use language not regularly, especially the uh, section of uh, vocab trainer and the exam skills to give him much practice. How can we uh, practice here? 
language you're not platform uh, when preparing for this is a language you not gives uh, us a chance to uh, also uh, to we use it in our uh, planning we use the vocab list of the excel and past papers also we include the examples of from the past papers and for uh, and uh, uh, vocab, uh, uh, vocabulary or edXL vocab in our planning daily. Also, we use Arablicious, which is a free site, and uh, this should be on the criteria and the specification. One of the good things is, is we use live Google Docs because we are a Google school. So this live Google is very important because we share it with the students and the students uh, write their answers so we give them, for example, this this document will continue for two years, this year and next year. And uh, I update it with questions and the students update it with answers. If you look at this using also CAM, you will find that a student, we finished the theme one and a student wrote his answers. This is the questions of the teacher and the, the, the these, are, these are the teacher, the students uh, answers. I checked them. And then I can record also, and the student can record. Uh, I give the feedback and the student so we can update daily uh, if we want. Also, there is a library as I uh, quickly. This, you can create a library for your student in your school. This library should include, for example, here. I can go to the writing, for example, if we go to this. We, as, as Charlie said, we empower students. For example, here we can show them what is the writing paper look like. For example, we can show a student, for example, uh, this question one, uh, writing uh, informal letter for uh, this. And for example, here, yeah, uh, the student should be aware that uh, in this formal letter, he will write how many words, what are the mark, and what 12 and 12, uh, 12 mark on content and eight on uh, on language. So he will be aware about this and uh, how to write. So if he uh, or the student look at this, uh, uh, these ideas, he will know that he need to expand the four bullet points. He need also to use the, the tenses and use personal opinion. A final thing here to show you that the criteria, we also create uh, the criteria in a practical form. For example, we can show students the, uh, because they are supposed to use connective and make complex sentences and also uh, show opinion and reason in the exam. Also to use adjectives and one of the things is using also tenses, uh, tenses and that's why we provide them with additional work which is uh, useful. So uh, the tips for the teachers to improve the elixir GCSE is to, uh, is to provide the students with more practice on the receptive and the productive skills. And these are some examples. Okay, this ministry also, we follow the ministry language, not also, we use it in ministry because it has a lot of things. And also we have, we follow the framework. Also in our school, we have a, a, a program for, we created a program for the beginners and also we use language not, and this is a book also we use. There is a section language not about beginner. And our exercise, Arabic exercise book, is very amazing. Okay, when we started to join the MFL, uh, Charlie gave this idea and asked me to design uh, common uh, or the, the most common words. So I created this and uh, really it was a very successful idea. It's in the front of the books. If you look at the back of our exercise book also, we will find also that in the back of the exercise book, the classroom language, the alphabetical system for the beginner and also the, the, the tenses. So the, it is a very amazing and it was a very successful idea. You can apply it in your schools if you like it. This is the last thing is the our amazing platform which uh, saves our time and effort is language or not. Really, I advise uh, uh, your, you to use it because it's uh, amazing and uh, if you like it uh, too, uh, if you, uh, we can Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, okay. It's uh, loading. So uh, there is a section, as I told you, uh, you can create your content. There's, there are sections for speaking all all language skills. 
and you can uh, also it gives uh, you certificates for the students who achieve work to encourage them to use it and uh, this is uh, the end of our webinar thank you for your listening and contribution lovely thank you very much that's brilliant um great so if anyone has any questions um then it would be great to uh to write them in now we've, just, we've got a couple of minutes um i've had a couple of people asking for um strategy like for, for you to email potentials and things over um so what i would say uh to anyone is that it would uh yeah um the best thing is to is to probably to contact either yeah hisham or charlie directly um sorry just uh moving the saver um great and also if you are interested in having a language nut trial then um yeah you can go to languagenut.com or you can contact um daniel at languagenut.com um thank you so much to charlie hisham that was a really really interesting and very productive yeah. webinar with lots lots of ideas which i'm sure lots of you can use um i don't have any questions from anyone but if you do yep yeah, so you can contact um either yeah charlie hisham or any of us at language nuts and we will get that all passed on um and i also this webinar has been recorded so we will get this sent out to everybody who registered and it will also be available on the language Nut website and on our youtube channel as well um yeah i'd like to say one final big thank you to charlie hisham uh, for the really interesting webinar and, uh, <laughs> okay, thank you. And uh, yeah, that's the end of our of this series of webinars uh, for this for, yeah for this part of the year. And so we'll be back later on in the spring with some more webinars. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you. Very much. <clears throat>